Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. This is episode 18 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And uh, in one of the previous episodes we have deployed an orbital telescope, a small one. We were trying to, I mean Kerbals have seen Moon and Minmus and they were wondering if there are any other planets out there. So they have actually deployed an orbital telescope to answer that question. And after some period of searching, this telescope started to bring answers. Um, they have found one spot in the night sky that they call Duna. So, and here you can see uh, the small orbital telescope trying to get a better glimpse of this spot in the night sky. Is it a planet? Is it an asteroid? Or is it something else? Um, this, uh, by the way, when I was playing with this uh, orbital telescope, I didn't know how to adjust gyro sensitivity. So I was trying to do everything using the big gyroscope. So, oh, and here we start to see something. So once we zoom enough, it, this is a little bit annoying that it's kind of hops up and down, but uh, when we zoom in, we start to see actually what Duna looks like, and it has some polar ice caps. And however, the science we're getting it from it is pretty bad, mostly due to the antiquated active processor of our wild field camera. So while certainly good to make observations of Moon and Minmus, we decided it is time to deploy something bigger. So, and here is me basically researching the nodes that will enable us to actually go big on our space telescope. So, um, advanced electronics, sure, why not? Then energy parts, and the goal here is to go towards a little bit towards ion technology because uh, what we are hoping for is that uh, discoveries, as observed from this telescope, the planets that we uncover, or the moons, or whatever, will trigger a new era of space research, and that means going interplanetary. So, yeah, now we're trying just unlocking the necessary technologies to actually be able to get a sneak peek into the interplanetary space. So, let us start building the big space telescope, which, for obvious reasons, we are going to call Kabul. So, um, not really original, there were many who called it like this before, but I think it's pretty fitting, being a big space telescope. Um, so, remote probe core, big one, uh, also some batteries to make sure that we have enough electric charge. Then we come to the telescope tube. And in the bay, we will be putting processors. And there are three different types of processors. One is white angle camera, another one is asteroid, and the third one is some observation, which I haven't completely gotten the concept of it. So I'm putting uh, both asteroid and wide, um, and wide angle camera three. And we have not yet unlocked, I believe, the third one. So, we will just leave the place empty and probably as we unlock the technology, we will be sending this uh, processor uh, maybe in a re refitting ship or maybe even an SSTO. I think the SSTO would be cool. Um, all right, so now we are attaching a fuel tank, two and a half meter and some engines that would be a, capable of propelling this space telescope to um, a little bit around the carbon orbit. So, um, I was kind of thinking when it came to reaction wheels, uh, I was thinking of putting the two and a half meter one, but I don't think it's really necessary. So I opted for the one that defaults with the space telescope as such. So. And I'm gonna go probably with the GRU 2000 because that one is probably more advanced and I'm kind of hoping more sensitive as well 
because you saw what happened with the small telescope when we were actually trying to go to move it. It just wobbled like crazy. So I'm kind of hoping this would be more sensitive. Okay, then what we need? We need some solar panels, yes. And cacti has its own solar panels, but I think we deploy them already with a smaller one. And the processors actually take quite a lot of power. So I'm pretty think that we would need four in total for the big space telescope. So I'm more inclined to actually go with the bigger Mm, solar array. I'm thinking just gonna, gonna put slap on two gigantors and that should hopefully be good enough. Yeah, and it also looks cool. I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll roll with it. Yeah. Oh, no, not three, two. Yeah. Much better. Okay, and I'm just gonna slap a little bit more batteries in there just to make sure that we don't run out, run out of it. I mean, they're pretty high on the consumption and I really have to get rid of my um, of my fuse box. Sadly, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure that the mods fixed it already, but this version which I used in 090 wasn't working, so yeah. Okay, and let's call it Satellite Cobble Telescope. Mark II, big. Okay, and time to do the simulation. Uh, let's us just first decide action groups, and we want to extend um, the antenna because uh, we are playing with remote tech, so that means it has to start. Mm, it has to start big. So here you can see it deployed on the test run, and I just want to see that I'm able to see stuff with it. I've also already pre-selected Duna and let us zoom in and I'm thinking this will be beautiful as you can see. We can see really Duna in all its glory and we'll get quite a bit of science for doing so. I mean don't remember don't forget this is only a test run. So that means that uh, whatever we do it will revert. So okay time to pack the telescope. Let us put the re retract this and time to create the lifter stage for it. So let us build the lifter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, something like this. Then we put two and a half meter fairings by uh, provided by KW rocketry okay that looks good then a big reaction wheels at least for this stage then let's put a probe core or um, let's see Yeah, let's put a probe core, a big one, because ultimately I'm starting to feel a guilt of conscience of just leaving my leaving trash in the orbit. So I'm kind of hoping that I would be able to, to recover this uh, lifter. I mean, we don't uh, play with uh, with the actual funds, so we don't need to care. But still, I, it's it's only good business to clean up after yourself. So yeah. And 4,371 delta V, which I think should be enough, but I'm kind of skeptical a little bit. Mm, I'm kind of thinking maybe it would be better if we just put slap on a little bit bigger fuel tank. Something like this, I think, should suffice. 4.7. No, actually, uh, let's put the big ass one. Yeah. 5.230. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, uh, or not. Yeah, 4.7 actually might do it. I will add uh, two SRBs rather than just uh, having one single big rocket. Just for aesthetic reasons, because why not? And SRBs are cheaper anyway, so. Yeah, and um, here I notice I made a, a typo. It's not with lifer, it's with lifter, but yeah. Um, I got sloppy, what can you do? 
so 5.2 and we need some more fins to stabilize the rocket and I actually found that this putting boosters at 45 degrees is better because then I can put fins at 90 degrees which give me a much better control over the roll and the, the pitch parameters so uh, a little bit batteries so we don't run out of electric charge uh, then parachutes by all means By the way, I'm not go trying to get Elon Musk all over here and just land it down uh, with using the rocket. Uh, we're just going to use the parachutes and just drop it plane in the ocean and hope that that should be good enough. I'm hoping that the most of the stage will survive. We'll see. That's why this is the first trial. So I'm also putting another antenna because we actually do need... Oh, come on. We need the actual antenna to be able to uh, control remote control it. Otherwise, <laughs> it's not going to fare very well for us. Okay, and we are setting the groups for arming the parachutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's saying that the craft is too big. Well, clearly it is when it's full and everything, but... Okay, so let's just build a vessel. Warping to complete. Okay, and let us roll it out. By the way, the science harvester that we used in a couple of episodes ago, I'm thinking of saving maybe when we go for the moon simply because I mean there is no point on repeating us as it's still a good ship and it will be good for hopefully collecting the stuff and we have liftoff for our Kabul space telescope so thrust looks nominal everything looks appears to be in order stage separation and we're doing our gravity turn we are kind of hoping for around 300 kilometers periapsis hopefully or apoapsis and periapsis circular orbit anyway so just regular ascent nothing out of the ordinary our apoapsis is going to be around 100 I think for the time being okay deploying antenna and the solar panels and let us calculate for circularization and we want apoapsis of around 300 kilometers as I said Three, 350 maybe hmm ah, maybe 350 we'll figure it out so angling towards the maneuver and just thrusting I noticed that this stage has more than enough delta V so I'll need to ditch it at some point um, yeah, but let's first circularize yeah 200 by 97 okay let's detach and let us burn to get into the apoapsis around 300 at least 350 there we are Coming back to the first stage, I just want to make sure that I enable the remote tech, extend the remote tech antenna so that I can control the craft at a later stage. Cool. Now, let us see. Uh, it's a lot of delta V for from this end, so we'll have to burn from apoapsis. So let's switch to the telescope. And let us go to the apoapsis and then make sure that we circularize at 350 kilometers. Slightly higher orbit than the small ap mm, small um, small telescope. I have very high expectation of this uh, telescope. To at least be able to uncover the whole carbon system if not maybe even a few surprises so
I don't think I will be discovering all the planets immediately because we cannot open our lens when we are facing the sun. And at this point of this recording, Eve was pointing towards the sun. So we were able to point towards Jewel and Duna. So. Going into the Kerbin's shadow. Making sure that we burn for the circularization in two minutes one minute and there we go 350 by 345 well, I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't need to be exact. It's just important that it's good enough. It's not like communication satellites that has to be right on. So, in the end, I circularize it 357 by 357. So, uh, let us now start reaping the benefits of the, our big space telescopes. So, let us see zoom out and let us find Duna and take a good look at Duna. As you can see Eve was definitely in their direction towards the Sun so I didn't want to ri risk to actually get that one and it turns a little bit slower which is okay I would expect that given that the reaction wheels are not that strong on it and they don't need to be. I mean for the telescope this was actually a very educational uh, mission because I realized how really sensitive have the reaction wheels need to be when you're using the interplanetary telescope. You all of a sudden get newfound respect for the guys designing the Hubble and all others. So, okay. Let's see. We are pointing towards Duna. Let us open the aperture. And let us toggle the GUI. So, zoom in. Come on, Duna, show your face. I'm also reducing some sensitivity on the gyro units because I want to do to really. I'm really not sure what does it mean sensitivity. Is it less is more sensitive or right is more sensitive? So please somebody if you have used the cacti in the previous episode let me post it in the comments below. It will help me out a great deal. I mean I'm not that patient when it comes to figuring it out. <laughs> Okay, and here we see Duna, and we see that it has one moon. Like so, let us just nicely align, and I'm thinking of turning the telescope, because I really want to see it as is. I want to see the poles align correctly, and that kind of puts me where I need to actually, once again, unzoom to figure out... Ah, here you are, Duna. Okay, so let us go left, right, left, right. Okay, make up your mind. Cool. Uh, ooh, oops. Close. Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm still learning how it works. Mm -hmm. And let us zoom in and take a good look at Duna. Obviously for the first time, not counting the simulation. So, ooh, ooh. Oh, man. By the way, I realize now that if I press caps lock, I get finer controls, so yeah. I'm trying to zoom in a greater degree. Uh, 
A little bit more, a little bit more. Come on, come on, you can do it. And I start seeing what is this? What? Oh. Oh well, I guess we got back and it's Kerbin that's actually starting to obstruct our view towards the Duna. Well, we'll just close the aperture and wait for the discovery to appear itself on the next orbit. So let us just go towards the next orbit. Okay, I think now that we have gotten out of the Kerbin's shadow. Yep, we have a clear view towards Duna. So let us try this again. Open aperture, toggle GUI, and let us try and zoom in towards it once again. Okay. Okay, a little bit, it's, <laughs> it's st I'm still chasing it a little bit, but yeah, I'm kind of hope it settles. Okay, I'm not just trying to align it vertically before I actually do it horizontally. A little bit more to the left. Down. Okay, stop. Stop. Stop now. Okay. Fine. Let us now try zooming in. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with it. So let us snap a photo. You make an observation of the body. Perfect. And we got 40 signs for it, so let's send it. And this is what it looks like when put on the on the desktop. Okay, so we have a picture of Duna and Ike. Uh, by the way, I realized later that you have to point also to Ike as a target and then take snap a photo, but yeah, I, I just decided to do it off camera. We have seen it, it's there, so no point in terms of getting additional, repeating myself in terms of additional tasks. So, we have also noticed that in alignment we have also Jewel. And we have heard stories about some green grass, green as giant somewhere with a couple of planets back, so we figured it, since we're already looking in that general direction, we might as well turn our telescope to actually see what's out there. And there we are, there is Jewel, and the moon is also in the way. Hi moon! We will come back to you eventually, but right now we are more interested in discovering all these far bodies. What do we have there? So, reducing the gyro sensitivity and let us start zooming in. By the way, I really like how is this powerful. Oh, and there is Minmus. Huh, this is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> Minmus is also in the way. This is really nice alignment. Okay. But well, our focus is now Jewel. It's supposed to be in there somewhere. So. Then I realized that you cannot actually 
take picture of Minmus unless you are really uh, unless you are really focusing it so you have to select it as a target and then we will get the science so it doesn't really matter let us just now take a good look at jewel scope not zoom in far enough yes because we were looking at Minmus clearly okay and stop okay I think we're very well aligned now so let us zoom in and see what Jewel looks like and here we have it the green giant and we see it has some moons orbiting around him let's snap a photo I've taken the screenshot at a later time when you can clearly see it had a lathe which is the small uh, the sm its small moon which is very Kerbin like as it at least or it at least it appears uh, so in the first photo so let us take a little bit better look at lathe set the target and let us take a good look come on lathe the d re difference between the pictures I that you're seeing here and the s screenshot is that I took them at a later stage so yeah it's a full disclaimer I'm not trying to hide it but yeah what can you do I only later realized that this doesn't is not the way how you snap a screenshot you have to go on a separate disk icon besides just in case somebody was wondering okay 120 science for lathe well clearly it's a big discovery and it looks beautiful this will definitely be one of the future stops of our program so lathe ladies and gentlemen okay so let's see now focus which one do we focus pole I think we, I saw one more body that I wanted to shoot I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there are any other planets in alignment where we could actually take a po photo of it but not really and as you can see here, this is a little surprise that I've been talking about. I'm using the Outer Planets mod. So the, it's Jewel is and Elo are not the final um, planets here. We also have Sarnus, Sarnus we have Plock, we have uh, many more. So yeah, the goal is to, to even go to some other further planets. But right now we are just trying to this is actually the first glip, glimpse into the interplanetary space so uh, and this is basically the reason why I didn't want to put transfer windows in the Kerbal alarm clock which most of the other people when you just start putting playing do because we haven't yet observed this body so we didn't don't know where they are what's their orbit uh, and so we don't have all the parameters how we could know and calculate the actual transfer burns so once we actually take now a good observation of Duna and Jewel we will for sure be planning a transfer windows and start thinking about sending probes there and also identifying all the technical requirements that we need to fulfill in order to have a successful missions to them and here you can see me trying to battle the gyros of the cobble to actually take a photo of Tylo. Zooming in, zooming in. Don't run away, Tylo. Yeah. Great. Sweet science back there. Okay and here is what it looked like when I actually took it on screenshot so without further ado uh, we have taken a couple of screenshots parked the lens 
Uh, so I don't want to bore you with all the, the planets that we were going to shoot. So I, off camera, I only took observations of Moon and Minmus more. And the other ones I'll probably do at some point later in the series when we will be planning transfer burns towards them. So right now what I'm doing is actually trying to get the return or the lifter stage back to Kerbin. So let us see... Can we really do this? So far it looks pretty promising. We have put the periapsis around 12,000. I mean, we're not playing with that re deadly re-entry. And we have uh, control, we have remote tech probe, we have antennas, and we have parachute, so we should be good to go. And we are starting to hit the atmosphere. And now I'm just thinking to align the rocket lift the stage orbit retrograde yeah here we go this will ensure that we have a smooth re-entry which is definitely nice let us just a little bit time accelerate further down until we get to some 30 29 28 and we are starting to burn Okay, so far seems like a smooth re-entry with one minor glitch. The, um, if you can see my remote tech camera, it says no connection. Well, I'm not above the Kerbal Space Center and the communitron antenna that I had snapped. That means, and I have never pre-armed the parachutes which pretty much puts us in the position where we will be landing this the quick way, not the preferable way. So, yeah. By the way, uh, we're a little bit coming on towards the end of this episode. Yeah, well, we landed it. But the other problem is that there's nothing left of, of it. Uh, anyway, we have gotten some sweet science, which we will use to further our advancement. Um, I guess this is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Like if you like and subscribe for more KSP content. Thank you for watching. This is Gromforks signing off.